Hi, this is Pearson Education. In this video, uh, we're going to talk about how you can use StackCrunch um, to show students how they can collect uh, crunch and then communicate data effectively. Uh, and you'll be able to see how uh, data can be misinterpreted or maybe how some graphs aren't as useful as others um, and can teach students misconceptions based on um, the data and the graphs and reports that they use. So uh, we're going to go to StackCrunch. And when you click on StackCrunch, your uh, statistics textbook has uh, data sets um, from your textbook that you can use in StackCrunch. You can have students actually use these data sets. Uh, and the one that I'm going to use um, is actually in Chapter 5. You can, of course, choose any uh, data set that you'd like. I'm using the first one in Chapter 5 uh, because it's kind of interesting to me as I am a sports fan and a football fan and this is actually data taken from the um, combine uh, the NFL combine where rookie players come in and they do different types of exercises so you can see they do the 40 yard dash they do vertical jumps benching shuttle run uh, cones 20 yard dash and so forth and so you can see these are the students and then here's all of their um, data or the <laughs> the athletes <laughs> they are students so they're in college okay so from here um, let's uh, start working with things like uh, let's say the students are trying to create a graph uh, so let's take a look at creating maybe a graph and say we know how to do pie charts so let's do a pie chart with data and let's just say we'll do it by player and click compute and so here's where a student could go in and obviously uh, this is a very pretty picture, but not necessarily a piece of data that's going to tell a really good story. And of course, that's what students are trying to do, is they're trying to tell a story with data. Uh, and that's what data does. So let's take a look at how we can sort of take a student misconception where they might go right into like a bar plot or something like this, uh, and then we can make it more helpful for them. So if I hover over my brightly uh, colored picture here, um, I can see you know, there's data in here and it's telling me a little bit of information, but it's basically only telling me about 0.39% of the data. Okay, so that doesn't tell a really great story. So maybe I want to look at how I can collect um, this data a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. But notice what happens when I close it off. It didn't actually get rid of it. It actually saved it right up here. And so we can see that that pie chart is still there. Now, the reason we're doing that is because we want students to accidentally save things uh, so that their work doesn't get um, destroyed or thrown away. So just so you know, uh, it's nice. It's a nice feature to kind of make sure that uh, things that they're working on don't accidentally just disappear. Uh, so we save it over here. If they do want to get rid of it, they can get rid of it and so forth. But it's nice that we actually are trying to save the students uh, a little bit of time and effort and trouble. Okay, so now let's look at a new way to look at this data. So let's take a look at another graph. Okay, we'll go back to graph. We'll go back to pie charts because we seem fairly familiar with those. Uh, this time, let's do it by position. And so now I can see uh, at least uh, the data is starting to make a little bit more sense to me. So I can look at this data, and one of the things I might be able to see is that wide receivers and cornerbacks are basically, uh, there, there's more of them at the combine than any other position. Uh, and then I can start to wonder why, and maybe it's because uh, they're highly valued, they get, uh, there's more competition, uh, maybe they get drafted higher, uh, things like that. So they want to be there to promote themselves and present themselves. So you can start to kind of look at that. Um, and we can go back and we can do some other things. So let's take a look at the pie chart again and with data. Uh, this time I'm going to do it by player. Uh, and then I'm going to add, and if I hold down the shift key, and highlight them all it adds them all and if I hit compute what we'll see now is that graph that we had earlier but notice what it'll do is it'll actually create a pie chart for every one of those columns and so now I can see the one we were looking for uh, looking at a moment ago and then if I go forward now I can start to see okay this is showing that you know a senior classman and red shirt seniors um, make up sort of the majority of students that are there at the combine I can go through a little bit further and I can see how much that you know, the majority of players actually weigh between 200 and 250 um, pounds. Um, I can go over here and now I can see uh, the 40 yard dash. 
So people who run in the four uh, to five range uh, seconds right here, and here's the five to six range. So there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot more fast people there than there are uh, less fast, uh, and so forth. And so this kind of shows me um, I can start to see data a little bit better, and I can start to see more information with the data, and I can start to probably begin to tell my story, or at least tell better stories about the data. So I'll save these just by closing them out. They're all saved up there now. Uh, and now I'm going to get a, uh, a different graph. Maybe a graph now. Uh, maybe as an instructor, you might uh, lead your students to choose something that might make more sense to them. Um, I'm going to use a graph, and I'm going to go with the scatter plot. So with my um, scatter plot, what I want to look at is maybe um, correlation. So let's look at correlation. Um, we can look for positive and negative correlation. So I'm going to choose uh, weight and I'm going to choose bench press because I believe there's probably a correlation between uh, weight and bench press. And so actually it does look, let's see, like we have um, a, a correlation here. So if we're looking at the scatter plot, I can kind of, I can scroll over uh, the different individuals. And I can see that uh, this individual is 329 pounds, and um, you know he benched 37 uh, times. And then if I come down here, I can see that this uh, individual at 182 only uh, benched nine times. So it does look like a correlation to me. So let's find out what kind of correlation it is. I can actually go to stat, and go to the calculators, uh, or actually summary stats, and I'm going to go to correlation, and I'm going to choose weight, and I'm going to hit control on my keyboard and select bench. And I'm going to compute, and I can see actually the correlation isn't as close to 1 as I thought it would be. I thought it would be a very tight correlation, but it's actually a 0.368, which round 0.37. Um, so I'm kind of a, uh, uh, let's see what else we can do. So as I look at my scatter plot, I'm starting to see down here there's some items down here, and these items might be throwing off my data set because they're all down here in the bench press zero, bench press zero, bench press zero. Um, so they're throwing off my um, chart. So now uh, I'm going to highlight these and then when I highlight them I'll be able to see them in the, the data on the left hand side. So let's take a look at that. So I highlighted these guys and I'm pretty sure that based on the data here that they just didn't uh, do the bench press. So because of that I want to get rid of them so I'm going to click edit and then I'm going to come and I'm going to go to So edit, not cut, actually going to go to um, rows. And then from rows, I'm going to hit delete. So we're going to delete those 72 rows. Yes. So now they're gone. Um, but notice they're still down here in my data set. Um, but now I want to, so my original correlation was still there. Uh, now I'm going to do a new correlation. So I'm going to go back to uh, stat. And we're going to go to summary stat. We're going to do correlation again. Uh, and this time I'm going to do weight and bench and compute. And notice now we're a little bit closer to a 1. We're a little higher. 0.67 seems to be a relationship, a positive correlation between weight of the individual and how many times they could bench press the, the weight. So this is really cool. Um, now, if uh, for some reason you want to go and do more than this, which you obviously always can, um, you can always go back to uh, the StatCrunch homepage. So back to the StatCrunch homepage. And of course, you go to support. Uh, and if there's, uh, here's some examples. And basically, all of uh, the common uh, types of data in crunching that um, you may have your students do inside of StatCrunch are here and listed, and they uh, show you how to go ahead and do those. So if you want to learn simple bar plots or pie charts, uh, split and stacked bar plots, histograms, and so forth, you can come here and we have uh, quick videos that show students and yourself uh, how you can go through and perform those functions. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day.